In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple, free, and super effective RSVP system for an event calendar on your WordPress website. For this specific tutorial, what we're going to be using is just two plugins that are both freely available on the WordPress plugin repository. One of them is PyCalendar, and the other is WS Form. Now, PyCalendar is going to handle the event date and time, displaying the calendar that you can see here, and a couple of other things we'll get to in a moment. And then what we're going to use WS form for is the ability to have one form that no matter which event your user clicks on, it automatically pulls in that data, such as event time and date, the event title. And then when they submit it, you can either get an email or you know do things like export to CSV. Whatever you need to do, this system is gonna work. So with these two plugins, we're gonna build a system that will allow your visitors to RSVP to an event in cases where you don't need to sell tickets and you don't need to do anything complicated. You just need to keep track of who's coming to your event. So let's take a look at one of these. If I scroll down so you can see this community outreach day, if I click on it, PyCalendar has a popover that gives you some of the information. In this case, this would just be the excerpt of the post. And if I go view it, I can see the regular old WordPress post here. Now, one thing I've done in this case using my theme is I've hooked in the PyCalendar shortcode to display that event's start and end time, which is handy. But in this case, we're gonna put the form right there too. Now, depending on your theme or page builder, you might do this a little bit differently, but I mentioned we're gonna be using one WS form that will automatically bring in this info for all of our individual events. And the way that we're going to achieve that is by using our theme functions to kind of hook that into place here. So in my case in Generate Press, I have this block element and there's the short code I just mentioned, and we're gonna stick the WS form in there in just a moment, but we need to go ahead and create that. So let's get started there. In WS form, I'm gonna start off by adding a new form here and we'll just use the blank template. Then what we need to do in this case is just simply drag in a basic text field. And this is going to just hold some of the data about our event. So in this case, we just need to say something like event name. And then what we'll do is click on the little gear here. What we'll do is go with default value and we'll click this little variables button. And what I'll do is just search for title. When we find post title, I'll just click it. And then the other thing I wanna do in this case is make it so this field is read only so the user can't accidentally change the value of that field. So let's save and close. I'll simply publish this. And so we can kind of see what's happening. Let me refresh this. I'll come down here to add the WS form light. We'll select our form that I forgot to give a form title to. We'll do that in a minute. We can save this. And then let's go refresh on this community outreach and it's gonna pop in right here. And there it is. So there is the field for community outreach day, which is the name of this post. In my case, I'm just using the standard WordPress post, community outreach day, as you can see, regular old event title right at the top, and that's what's being brought in. Now what we need to do is add a couple of other fields so that we can bring in information like our start date and time, like we have here in our calendar picker from PyCalendar. So let's go back to our WS form. Let's give this a name. We'll just give it something like event RSVP form. And then one thing I need to do before I forget is drop in the submit button down here. So that'll be useful for us in just a little bit. Then again, we can go ahead and just use a regular text field to bring in this time and date. So what we're gonna do here is go to field settings. In the default value, we're gonna search for a variable here called meta. And what we're looking for is this post underscore meta. So when I drop this in, we need to give it a key. Now, PyCalendar has a ton of meta fields that you can pull in depending on what you need to display. But in our case, we just need to pull in the start date and time. For PyCalendar, we need to start off with an underscore, then type PyCal underscore start underscore date. Again, I wanna switch over here and make this read only so that can't be accidentally modified. Save and close, and then we'll publish this. And let's refresh on the front end of our community post. And there is the start date and time. Now PyCalendar stores that information in a very common standard, but it's not super user friendly just reading 20, 24, 11, T09, you know, that doesn't really work. But fortunately WS form has us covered. We can reformat that information automatically and WS form does the conversion for us. So what we'll do is go back to our form. I wanna go ahead and rename this field from text to event date and time. So from here to make that date format something usable, we can take this whole value right here and wrap it in another function that WS form offers us. So what we need to do is look for this function right here called date format. All you need to do is just type in format, click on date, and then you can just drop this in. And what we need to do is take that key that we just used to bring in the pie calendar data and replace this little part of the string right here that just says date. So it's gonna get a little hectic here just because it's nested inside of each other. 
So what I'll do before I replace this key so we can see is we also need to provide it a format. Now this is going to be looking for a standard PHP date and time format. And the easiest way to see some examples is just go to your WordPress settings and under date format, you can see a couple of options here. So in my case, I'm just gonna copy this F J comma Y. I'm gonna drop that in there. Then I'll just do a space. And then what I'm gonna do for the time format is just copy this one right here. We'll just pop that in. And then now what we need to do is take our post meta field from before, which I just have on my clipboard and pop that in. So it looks a little bit hectic, but you can see we have date format wrapping the post meta pie calendar start date. And then it's got all of our time functions right there. So let's go ahead and save this publish and then refresh. And now we can see that the date time provided by pie calendar to WS form is being automatically converted into something very useful that both your user that's filling out the form and anybody that receives it is going to see and understand very clearly. So this is super, super awesome. Now, if you were doing this and your event had an end time that was important, like if maybe there was job shifts or something like that, you could just duplicate this field here. And then all you'd have to do is just simply change this from PyCalendar start date to end date. And then everything else is gonna work exactly the same. PyCalendar has a bunch of other meta fields that if you need to display that information in the form, you certainly can do that as well. In our case here, I'm just going to delete this. And one thing that I'm going to do in our case is for this actions, I don't have SMTP set up on this server, so I'm going to delete the send email function. So then from here, what I'm going to do is drop in another text field, and this one could just be like your name question mark, then it could be your email address, and then maybe your phone number. We can go ahead and make these fields required, just quickly flip through them, and then we're going to just save, publish, and go look on the front end again. So here is our form now. It's filling in the event name, which of course I can't change. Same thing with the event date and time because we set those to read only. Your name. Then you can just go ahead and fill in your information. And when we submit, then of course, whatever actions you want to have happen, you can configure directly in WS form, whether it's sending you an email. And then of course, just as you would expect, if we come over here to the submissions tab, we can select our form. And there is the submission here. So it has all of that information. What event name, the event date and time for that event, my name, my contact info, all that kind of stuff, which of course you can view, export to CSV, again, whatever you need to do. Now, again, because we put this form inside of our template, we're gonna be able to reuse this same form and it automatically pick up all the information that any event has. So let's go back to our events page here. And then for instance, we were just looking at the community outreach day on Saturday, the 23rd at 9 a.m. Let's go instead to this one on October 31st for Trunk or Treat. We'll view this post. And again, it's going to say event name, pull that in automatically, the event date and time automatically, and we can fill in our information here just as you would expect. So that's how you can create a super simple but clearly very effective RSVP system for your website. It's especially awesome because you can use one form across your site to manage tons of different events. So you're not burdened with creating a form for every single event. Be sure to check out the websites for these products at piecalendar.com and WS form. And if you'd like to see more or have specific questions, please do drop them in the comments down below. My name is Jonathan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.